Oh, praise God. We give God all the glory. There is none like unto our God. He is so good and his mercies endure it forever. Today, too, I welcome you to the program, Remember Your Leaders. Yes, some of them have their names written in the Bible. Some we find in history. Today, we are going to continue with the lady evangelist, Catherine Kuhlman. This woman is indeed a strong woman of God. Hallelujah. She is my mentor. She is my role model. We thank God for Catherine's life. Her life has brought boldness into the lives of many women. And trying to pinpoint five turning points in the life and career of the healing evangelist Catherine Kuman is an interesting project. Kuman worked diligently her entire life to control her narrative, to emphasize what she wanted known and to shuffle aside what she preferred not to talk about. Last week we started talking about Kathleen Kuman. Today we'll continue. Hallelujah. After an unsuccessful revival, Kuman is left behind in Denver by her sister Metal and brother in law Everett Parrot. We learned last week that she got she she came together with her sister in law her sister and her brother in law and another female pianist someone who was playing the piano for them and together they were in ministry but a time came when they are stayed together or ministry together was not going on well they left her alone Coleman and her sister and brother-in-law traveled together on the sawdust trail from Kuman's home in Concordia, Missouri, across the western states to California, then on to Idaho. After five less than successful years working with Metal and Catherine, Everett apparently tired of the arrangement. After a series of arguments with Metal and in boys, Idaho, Everett abandoned Metal as well as 21 year old Catherine and Helen Gulliford, the revival pianist, as he traveled on to South Dakota. The women were unable to make enough to continue by themselves. Outside the boys' women's club, where Metal Parrot continued to preach after Everett's departure. A local Nazarene pastor encouraged the three women to persevere. So gradually, the, this brother-in-law had to leave his wife and then go his way. So Catherine and her sister and the pianist also came together once more and her brother-in-law left them and they were not meeting uh, what they wanted to meet they did not uh, things were not going well with them but they got a pastor who was from Na nazarene he was from nazareth he was a nazarene and he encouraged them to go on in their ministry so that encouraged them but then Metal was unwilling to continue due to the their financial situation and had already decided to return to Ever Everett to back to her husband. But the man said to Metal, let the girl stay. The steady presence of 26-year-old Helen Gulliford must have, have held Metal's decision. Despite her misgivings, Metal chose to go back to Everett and she left the two women on their independent path. Kuman was ready. So now she's left with the pianist. Okay. 
She was an eager, enthusiastic, ambitious young woman determined to take the revival circuit by storm. Coleman began to travel with Helen throughout Idaho to preach. One participant in her other Idaho services remembered the evangelists regularly filled um, the Baptist churches during their two to six week revival meetings. And so whenever people hear that Catherine Kuman was coming to a place, the whole place will be full. And then Kuman, Catherine Kuman and Gulliford met with success in Denver. When they went to Denver, things were su successful. And so they established the Denver Revival Tabernacle in the 1930s. Catherine Kuman adored her father, Joe Kuman. We remember last week we talked about the relationship between Catherine and her father. If you have not listened to last week's episode, please go back to last week's episode and listen to it. Joe Kuman, who, who, who was the father of Catherine, took on mythic qualities in her stories of growing up. Her papa, whose indulgent love, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> countered the stern discipline of her mother. We saw how her mother was. It is in the first episode. Catherine's father's death, that his death was a stunning blow to Kuman, to Catherine Kuman. She perceived, she received a phone call on the Tuesday after Christmas. And I quote, I recognize the voice on the other end as an old friend from home. <clears throat> Kuman recalled, Catherine, your father has been hurt. He's been in an accident. Joe Kuman was killed instantly when hit by a car driven by a college student home for the holidays. After her father's funeral, Catherine Kuman returned to her ministry in Denver. At the age of 28, she was finally coming into her own as a leader. As a leader of the thriving congregation at the Denver Revival Tabernacle. Soon she made the acquaintance of Burroughs World Trip, an evangelist who came to Denver on a preaching junket in 1935. Hallelujah. Her story is so interesting. <clears throat> and so Catherine remained in Denver. It was necessary for Kuman to separate herself from the controversy connected with Boros, Boros, that is um, Boros World Trip. That was bogging down her career. Judging from the rapidity with which she left World Trip to return to her work, she instantly regretted her decision to marry him. So when uh, Bori came into World Trip came into um, her life, they gradually got married. But then their marriage was bringing down the ministry. There were so many things surrounding their marriage. So she decided that she will leave the marriage. She, she regretted her decision to marry that man. So Kuman faced a difficult problem to preserve any shred of her career. She had to leave World Trip and try to start again, all over again. But such a decision could itself destroy her. It was not easy at all for Catherine Kuman. A divorced female evangelist was not much better than a female evangelist married to a divorced man. Because this man was also divorced and it, it brought Catherine a whole lot of troubles. 
in a masterful interpre interpre reinterpretation of her life, Kuman cho uh, chose instead to present her decision to leave World Trip as a difficult moment of submission, the yielding of a strong willed woman to the relentless call of God on her life. Kuman chose to present the decision to leave her husband at the first possible moment as an act as an act of sacrificial atonement for her defiance of God's will. So she oblique she obliquely indicated throughout her career that she had realized her decision to marry World Trip separated her from God and from her call to ministry. As she told it, the sacrifice of her marriage was necessary for her final consecration as God's instrument. So, Kuman's only references to her marriage and divorce are couched in these terms. We will end here today too. We have a lot to say about Catherine. So we'll end here today and then we'll continue next week with part three of Catherine Kuman's story. I believe you are blessed. I know you are blessed. So do not miss any episode. Be with me every Saturday so that we'll talk about men and women of God. The song playing behind says that, playing in the background says that, remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you, their lives and their faith. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. God bless you. Enjoy this weekend and allow the Spirit of God to lead you in all that you do. For He's coming soon. Jesus is coming soon. So prepare, even as I also prepare for his coming. God richly bless you. Enjoy this weekend. And to meet next week too. Shalom.